Hey guys, welcome back to Magic Duels Origins. Uh, I am Ixalan, as always. We're going to do some versus battles. You guys seemed to enjoy them last week. So I've got five new decks here. Uh, a couple of them I made on stream, a couple of them I made uh, off camera. I've been just playing this game, really kind of enjoying it. So we'll start here and again go oldest to newest uh, over the course of the week. And we'll go with Grave Stuff, our, well, my mono black deck that I, I made, I think, on stream or just before stream. Played it a little this last week. It, it was a lot of fun. I also played a lot of, uh, well, not a lot of, I went to the Battle for Zendikar pre-release. So I've been kind of playing some actual magic, like physical cards, which is always a fun thing to do. I uh, went with my buddy, and then after the Battle for Zendikar pre-release, came back. Oh, we're fighting Sonic, the blue hedgehog. Sweet. Look, he's even got, like, the little blue things that says. Okay. Two lands... Plenty of stuff. We can keep this. And we're and we're starting, so that's good. I think I'm going to lead off with Shadows of the Past over Corpse Hauler. We could go aggressive, but I think having Shadows of the Past for the scry ability when our creature dies, which is almost guaranteed to die at some point, it's probably like muy bueno. Uh, this is actually really good, because now we can Evolving Wilds on turn 3, still play the Corpse Hauler and not feel bad that we're not playing like Dead Bridge Shaman which we can lead into on, on turn four. So that's pretty solid. So yeah, and then after the after the battle for Zendikar pre-release, came back here, um, and by here I mean like to my house, and played some played some board games with friends. But before that, I did a like two-man draft with my with my buddy Zach who went to the, the pre-release with me. Oh, this is this is very tempting. I think I'm child of the knighting instead of corpse holler. And this this is interesting because this makes it this makes him decide whether or not he's actually poking for one, or if he has something that has like three toughness for three mana, which is possible. But yeah, one of the things that I think is is really cool, and we didn't see it in this game. Destroy targets. Oh, you're running enchantment removal at sorcery speed. Huh. That is intriguing to me. I would not have expected that. Okay. And that gives him a few turns before he even has to deal with Child of the Night. I guess from his perspective. Um, we still have, And we have Languish. I, like, I didn't even comment on the fact that we have Languish in our opening hand, which is great. It doesn't mean I should probably not overflow the board. Just in case he has something up his sleeves. Um... We don't want to have to, like, blow ourselves out to take out a monster on his end. I think I'll scry two. Uh, I don't want either of those at the moment. Yeah, I'd rather have gas. That's that's a much better much better draw off Read the Bones. I'm, I'm willing to pay two life for that. It seems pretty good. So we can actually... Hmm, I just said I shouldn't flood the board. But I think if we, if we drop deck a land, I'm going Child of the Night, Dead Bridge. Kithian, huh? Destroy target creature with power three or less. Okay. This is interesting. Now I think I have to go into Deadbridge Shaman to to battle Gideon. Hope he's not gonna play another one mana black creature, I don't think. There's not I mean there's a few, but they're not really that great in this set. That's perfect for me actually. Because now I can Dead Bridge. And Child of the Night. Now, granted, I could have just two for one him by languishing, but languishing a bird and a Gideon, really not that great. Uh, I think most likely he's either not going to attack this round, or, I mean, he'll poke me with the bird. But see, there you go. There you get the double striker. And this is going to set him up for, for the next round. So now we can, we can swing in evenly, because... And hopefully get him for some damage, because I'm definitely languishing to kill a Gideon and a couple, and two Flyers. That seems fine. Even though it will screw us, but he might just take the damage, which is really good. So let's see, let's see what he's willing to do. My guess is he's not going to block with Gideon. He's probably going to send the sure strike, or the double striker here and just take two. But he might try to prevent me from gaining life by killing this first and just taking three. That's what he did. Okay. 
This works out even better, because now I feel like I'm really getting a good deal. I get in for three damage. I don't get any life, which is, you know, kind of a downside. Um, but when I languish here, I am two for threeing, but I'm really two for fouring, because I'm, I'm killing a card out of his hand. So now he's got to, like, completely rebuild his uh, board position. It's going to be a little hard for a, for a weenie aggro, which is kind of what this is looking like. He tossed a land, meaning whatever else is in his hand is probably important. So we're going to see what, what comes out of here. An Accursed Spirit. Okay. I'm okay with the Accursed Spirit, because that means we can we can chomp it with a child. Trade our, our two drops for his... Ooh. I kind of like this. This is a little bit riskier, but I'm going to get back the Deadbridge Shaman. So we're trading our 4 mana for his 4 mana, which is fine. But we also got our Hand, dis hand Disruption back. And 3 mana for 3 power creatures. Pretty solid. Although, I'm since I played in the Battle for Zendikar pre-release, I'm kind of in like draft mode. And like, lim well, not draft, limited mode, because I played sealed, so not quite draft. But uh, 40 card decks, like the, the vanilla test for, for power is a little bit different. I've got a 1-4. That player loses life. Okay, so we'll just stop him from doing shit pretty much all day. Um, I think... I'm going to throw down a child and a shaman. And I'm not going to attack this turn, but we'll attack with the shaman next turn. And this kind of forces him to either play out his hand, if he can... Or, like, if he plays out his hand, then he's not really worried about the Shaman, obviously. So I guess it kind of depends. If he attacks with this 1-4, we're obviously, like, we can chump it with the Gravedigger if that's all he attacks with. Or we can force a trade with these two if he attacks with, like, both of these. So we have a couple options. We can kind of see what he's going for here. So let's, let's push our luck and see what we can do here. With a 3-1... Kill the last card in your hand. He might just take the three. Yeah, he wants whatever he has in his hand. Which I think I'm okay with. I'm going to throw down the ghoul. Again, we, we are kind of swarming the board, but we already lost our languish. Um, this lets him freely kind of attack with both of these guys. He still can't really attack with this without trading it for my child of the night. Child of night. Why do I keep saying child of the night? I am a child of the night. I feel like that's part of a song. Ooh, okay. See, now he's got he's got a trade here that he's probably going to be willing to do. Oh, and he's giving a... F okay, that's far less scary than I thought. I thought he was giving it to this guy. If he gave it to that guy, I would get wrecked. Like, without direct removal for this, it does two... Da it, it would be doing at least five damage a turn. Plus this guy doing, like, seven. That's like a two or three turn clock. That's really kind of scary. Unfortunately, this means that I really have to... So that's only hitting for two, which is not bad, but he's going to start hitting for five. So we kind of want to top deck some removal here. I have plenty. Let's see if we can get something, maybe. I'm going to push this guy forward. And do we have enough? We can't play both of these, so I think I'm just going to throw another Shaman. This is the tough decision. Like, do you block? Okay. Interesting. Like, I would have blocked and, and traded there. Simply because you didn't have anything in hand. Like, I can I can keep playing creatures at this rate. If he swings with both of these, it does gain him three life. But then I can, like, go to the wall and still play creatures. Uh, that's... That is unfortunate. That puts us in a bad position. We effectively have to top deck, top deck removal, not top deck. That doesn't make any sense. We have to top deck removal. We're going to go to eight. Um, we can't attack with, what can we not attack with? We have to keep something as a blocker. So probably our grave digger. Or can I, I can drop two creatures so we can block both of those. So they can only send us to one, depending on what, what they rip. Um... Return up to one target zombie card 
from our hand. Let's attack with everything. See what he does. We're going to gain some life no matter what because his first striker has gone. It's not going to be super terrible. Okay, perfect. That's a fine. I mean, that's not really a trade. That's a trade. So two for one. Yeah. This guy is... Oh, he's a shaman. I was thinking he was an elf zombie. We didn't send any zombies to the, to the graveyard, unfortunately. Obviously, we're going to make try to make him discard a card. He won't be able to. So now here's the question. This is instant, though. I think we pass turn. Can I play... No. Yeah, we get, we're going to have to pass turn and see what he does. How many creatures do I have? I have a lot. So yeah, this... This could be bad. <laughs> I didn't think about the fact that we needed a blocker for this. Okay, so I'm gonna lose one, five from this guy, four from this guy, that's nine. He's gonna gain three. I think I have to kill one of these. Who though? One of the flyers, right? This guy's gonna do four, that puts me at seven. I can't choose a card in the attack zone? What? That doesn't make any sense. I must have accidentally like clicked on the enchantment or something. That's like, you can't choose this type of card. Okay. So we're not at three, right? Did we lose a bunch of life? Are we, okay, we're at one. <laughs> uh, that was not removal. All right, so I think we're effectively dead here. Yeah, okay, I botched this. That was my bad. I should have kept the blocker for this guy. I didn't I didn't do the math right. This is the important thing about doing the math correctly. So Sonic here is gonna get a an early victory. Which is basically how my my draft went. <laughs> I went to the pre release and then lost in round one. But then I, I made a comeback. Did a couple tweakings. I tend to run not enough lands on, in the limited format, which is really my downfall most of the time. So this guy is going to get his victory and we'll drop in ranking. This is actually just kind of a good matchup. We didn't really draw a lot of removal. We drew most of our weenies, but not answers in the grand scheme of things. So it was a good game though. I enjoyed this. This was, this was fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this as much as much. I don't know if you can join as much. You're not actually playing the game. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. That would be the correct sentence to say. Uh, we'll get this defeated screen. Off, get off, get off my face. So as you can see, we we have been ranking up. That was uh, staying around, you know, seven, seven to nine. It's kind of where I've been sitting. I've, I have some some much better decks, I think, than last week. So even though that was not a good example, but tune in tomorrow for hopefully a better performance. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Later.